Well, New Orleans Saints quarterback uh, Drew Brees is finding out the hard way uh, that when you state your opinion and you get an outcry response uh, for saying that ignoring the national anthem is equivalent to disrespecting the flag, well, you pay dearly for it. Here were the comments and, and since his follow-up remarks. I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Let me just tell you what I see or what I feel when the national anthem is played and when I look at the, the flag of the United States. I envision my two grandfathers who fought for this country during World War II, both risking their lives to protect our country and to try to make our country and this world a better place. All right, an enormous outcry over those comments right now, including from fellow uh, teammates of where I cannot read this, guys, essentially that it was uh, overdone and he feels bad if he's offended anyone. I think that is the gist of it. But my vision is horrible. All right, uh, fortunately, Doug Eldridge is, uh, is not. He's the daily agency founder of sports agent extraordinaire, sports encyclopedia. It is interesting, Doug, thinking about his situation, how he did a 180 uh, on something that used to be, you know, not debated and, and in fact, uh, it would be welcome. Not, not in this environment, not right now. What, what do you think? Well, you hit the nail on the head at the end, Neil, when you said not in this environment. These are, by any metric or measurement, absolutely socially and emotionally charged times. And it's, it's a strange day when Drew Brees, of all people, gets not only vilified, you can disagree with people, but to take it to the extent of calling him a racist. You know, one of my favorite NFL clients always said, well done is better than well said. And when you look at what Drew Brees has done and done well, $5 million this year to the state of Louisiana for coronavirus, 22, excuse me, $33 million over the course of his 19-year career to cancer-related charities around the world. And don't forget, it was Drew Brees and all of his teammates standing arm in arm and hand in hand post-Katrina in those neighborhoods, in those parishes to help bail and, and bucket people out. So I think when you look at what he's done, and, and calmer heads always prevail, taken as the whole, Drew Brees has certainly been a, a stand-up and stand-out guy for the NFL. But again, it's indicative of the times we're in right now. It's very emotionally charged. No, and that I get, but he said, I never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America, but he later tried to explain to ESPN that he stands with his teammates fighting for racial e equality and justice uh, at the same time with the military, past and present. He had talked about his uh, two uh, grandfathers who had, had served in the World War II. My only point in mentioning this is, uh, are, are sure. they, you know, mutually exclusive? Uh, you, you can... You can obviously stand for the national anthem and the flag, as you can for speaking out against things that desecrate that, including, uh, you know, uh, racial violence and the rest. Of course, and, and you and I have discussed this in the past, and we've always said two things can mutually coexist and be true at the same time. Now, I have the benefit of kind of the duality of perspective. I'm standing in front of a flag that's hung in my office for 12 years because it hung in front of my home for 27 years. My dad's buried in Arlington National Cemetery. My mom is president of the Gold Star Wives and serves as an Arlington lady. On the other hand, I've been so privileged to represent some of the most talented and perhaps even better people than they are athletes of African-American and Arabic and Asian and Caucasian descent and having the opportunity to, to talk with them and hear their perspective on experiences that I haven't shared is, it gives me the opportunity to see the broader picture. I'm not saying Drew Brees was wrong. And I'm not saying that those who have an opinion so strongly against him are wrong. I'm saying perception is reality. Perception shapes emotion, emotion shapes call to action. Drew was fervent in his stance, and in his mind, he was right. Those who criticized him were equally fervent. As I talk to you, I, I realize that I'm standing in front of a flag that, that is incredibly important to me, as is my family on the whole. But I also value the perspective and insight that I glean from my clients who speak so passionately and emotionally about this. Now, one thing I would take it back to, though, Neil, is something that you and I have discussed in the past, and that is, what is your objective, protest or progress? And if we're focused on the latter, look to athletes who, who garner the attention, but then transition and develop traction toward actually engaging and accomplishing the goals that the initial protest was designed to garner. That's where the progress comes into focus. And, and the, the NFL and the NBA has no shortage of athletes that continue to lead by example. One of the best Mandela quotes of all time was when he was talking about sports power to, to unite the world. He said, you know, it, it has the power to unite like little else does, and it can create hope 
Well, there was only despair. And who better to speak on the topic than the, the late, great Nelson Mandela? And I say all of that to say, it's easy in times of high emotion to judge and to give quick takes where reaction overtakes rationale. And perhaps that's where we are right now, which is why I said cooler heads prevail. Let's step back, let's listen. And if called into question, let's point to records because well done is always better than well said. And to my knowledge, Drew Brees' record thus far is beyond reproach. Well, I'm just wondering real quickly, if you can, Doug, uh, whether you'll, you'll be looked at suspiciously if you don't kneel at the national anthem and the football season ensues. What do you think? That, you know, Neil, that's a million dollar question. And who knows? It's both a long time and a short time until September. Some of these weeks feel like they're, they're 20 days long, and then some of these months pass by in the blink of an eye. At this point, who knows? But again, I keep coming back, not to sound redundant or repetitive, that calmer heads always prevail. Now, that doesn't take any of, any of the merit or the urgency behind the, the, this movement. But if we can sit down at a table and actually talk about the broader issues and from there calculate an action plan and then develop our team and our org chart to implement them, it creates a different paradigm. So to your point about kneeling, I think there's going to be a large contingent that do. And right now, the NFL doesn't have a regula regulation in place to, to govern it. They, they really came together with bubble gum and popsicle sticks to, to patchwork an agreement that, that would say, if you have an issue with it, stay in the locker yeah. room. Otherwise, if you're going to be on the sidelines, you're expected to stand. So we'll see how they, how they move to address that between now and September. But I, I have no doubt that they will most assuredly address that. My, my prediction is the, the, the league is going to do a complete 180 on this subject and almost demand the, taking a knee rather than standing. But we'll see. Uh, Doug, always good having you, my friend, and great perspective historically on all of this. Uh, Doug Eldridge, 